Hi, my name is The Primogen. I have a beautiful wife, four kids, and I've been a professional software engineer for over 15 years. I created this course, Everything You Need to Know About Git, because Git is the single most important tool to any software engineer in their career. In this course, we start with the basic commands, of course, that is push, pull, commit, add. Then we go into some of the more deeper and lesser known features of Git, including some of the config options around re, 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 how to properly rebase, and even exploring ref log and restoring deleted code. By the end of this course, you will never run into another Git problem you can't solve. This is pretty much the 80% of you'll do with Git. If this is all you ever learn about Git, you'll be moderately successful. Like you can get pretty dang far knowing about Git add, path to file, or a, a file pattern, Git commit, dash M, and git status. If you can just know those three commands, you're already doing pretty dang good, okay? So git, uh, git add will stage the file. It will add it to the index. Git commit will take your staged files, your index file, and then turn it into a commit with your, you know, the author name, the time, the contents of the change, all that, and will produce out a SHA. Did you know that SHA stands for secure hashing algorithm? Isn't that kind of disappointing? Like, it's a variant of MD5. Either way, it just it just is always disappointing to know that SHA means secure hashing algorithm. Uh, and then git status will just say, here's the state of your repo. All right, problem. Uh, we want to trace the steps of git from untracked to tracked. So here's this, don't forget these ones right here. This is what I want you to do. I want you to create a file called first.md. I want you to check the status of git. Then I want you to add first.md to the staging area recheck the status, see that it's being tracked, commit it with a friendly message, and then check the status again. If you're pretty good with Git already, you already know these basic commands, uh, please just, uh, just create a commit really quickly with first.md. We're gonna use it and we're gonna do something. All right, I'll start doing it right now. So I'm gonna jump over here. I'm gonna go to uh, first.md, I'll go hello fam, there we go. Git status, you'll see right here, untracked file. Git has no idea anything about this file. First time it's ever seen it, it doesn't have any information about it. If I go git add this and then redo it, you'll see now we are tracking it. It's officially a part of the Git ecosystem, but only on a singular level, meaning that it's only a part of the staging. It has no prior information besides for staging. If I go git uh, commit a dash M uh, friendly message, look how nice that is it's gonna tell me, hey, this is the first commit of the repo, the root commit, it has no parents. Typically, I usually go with Batman for my first commit. I think it's funny, because um, Batman doesn't have any parents, right? It's like, you gotta always go for that on the first <laughs> repo. I think it's fantastic. Um, and there you go, so we've made our first commit. So that means if I go get status, it says right here, you're, what branch you're on, nothing to commit. There you go, the tree is clean. So we already kind of walked through all that. So hopefully everyone has one commit, I think even in here, I do use, uh, I use my first commit. Okay, so the changes are in the repo. Uh, one of the common activities you should get into the habit of, or at least know it's available, is git log. Git log allows you to look at the history of the repo. It's a very powerful thing, and we're gonna go over a few of the options today, and we're gonna use it very regularly throughout this course, because it's just awesome to have in your, uh, in your, in your, Bat belt, I guess we're going with Batman themed things. Uh, anyways, so review or explore, check out uh, man git log. This, I want you to open up the man page and actually look at it. And I want you to search for dash dash graph and dash dash decorate. And just kind of do a quick read. Get kind of used to reading the manual. I'll do it along with you. Man git log, there's graph right here. And if I find the option, there's the option. Look, draw a text-based graphical representation of the commit history. Okay, it's good to know we have that. All right, and then we can go decorate. Uh, let's find the option. May have to go backwards. Decorate often is, uh, it's a little bit harder to read. Prints out the ref names of any commits that are shown. Probably not really sure what a ref name is. Well, remember, everything's a commit, everything has a SHA, and you can reference those commits with some sort of named item. Branches, right? Branches tags, there you go. Or the very special one named head. We'll go over head in a little bit. All right, problem. Uh, display the history of your repo with graph and decorate. So I'll do it right now, git log graph decorate. 
Often you don't actually have to use decorate if it's just printing out to standard in. Kind of like a little fun exercise to do. Watch this. If I go this, I drop decorate and I just do graph. You'll notice right here, head points to master. If I take this and put it out to a file and then cat out the file, look at what's missing, that bit of information. So if you're ever, you know, printing out anything to a file, you need decorate to actually get, uh, oh, decorate. You need, uh, you, need that inf you need that flag to tell you, hey, list out all of, uh, all the named commits for me. Nice little, just a nice little thing. So often you don't use decorate like in practice because you're just looking at the log, just something to be aware of. So now it's time to merge these two together. Um, there's actually two different ways you can do it. There's merge and there's rebase. We'll go over rebase at some point, but we're gonna start first with merge. Now remember a commit is just a set of changes in the entire code base at a specific point in time. And if you have work on one branch and you need to get it over to another branch, we got it, we're gonna use merge. Now, the thing about merge that's a little bit confusing is that when you use merge, you can have kind of two different outcomes. You can have one that has a merge commit and one that doesn't have a merge commit. And you've probably experienced this where sometimes you merge and you have to input a message and then sometimes you merge and you don't have to input a message. And there's a very specific reason why because it depends on your history. We'll go over that in just a little bit. We'll create the two situations which exist. Uh, so what is a, uh, a merge? A merge is just attempting to combine two histories that may or may not have diverged. Uh, diverging means like how we set it up. A is in the past and we both share A, but there could be zero or more commits in both branches that cause us to diverge. Now, whenever, whenever you are merging, get used to something called the best common ancestor, which is gonna be the first in common commit. So for us, we have ABC and we have ADE. A is the best common ancestor. In the docs, you'll often see it's called the merge base. And so really it's just the first thing that's in common. So if you were to walk up the tree, like if you were to think about it, you having to write this algorithm, you literally start at each commit and you just keep on walking the parents with the hash map, by the way, you'd wanna use a hash map here, unironically, you'd use a hash map to contain, or really a set, to contain all the, uh, all the things you've seen up to this point, all the commits you've seen up to this point. And the first time you have something that is in common, you know you've just found the best common ancestor. Funny enough, it's always a hash map. I don't know why, but it just always is. Anyways, so, um, Git then takes these two commits that you have, checks out the merge base or the best common ancestor, then plays those commits on top of it, creates a new commit called a merge commit, and that will actually have two parents. It'll have one parent from one branch and one parent from another branch, and that is a merge commit. And so this happens, uh, that's why you'll get a message because you have two different diverging branches. So we'll go over that, here we go. All right, so how to merge, very, very easy. You have a target branch, which is the branch you are on, and you have a source branch, the one you wish to merge uh, with. And the source branch is gonna be the one that you provide the name. This is how I think about it at least. I think this is probably the, the easiest way to think of it. And so you'll do git merge the branch you wish to bring onto the one you're currently on. So let's do it now. Let's merge foo onto trunk. But remember, we don't want to ruin our current trunk state. So I want you to check out a branch called trunk merge foo. So I'm gonna go get check out uh, trunk merge foo. Have my new branch. Remember dash B just creates a new branch if it doesn't exist or awesome. So now I'm gonna go get merge foo. There we go. We're presented this menu saying, hey, we need you to merge this together. We want you to add a commit message. It's been auto merged for you, but we still need a commit message. Because remember a commit is a series of changes that represents the entire state of the repo plus an author plus a message and time as well. When we're done, I want you to use git.log. So everyone that has just merged, use git.log and see what happens. So I'm gonna go scroll down here. And I also want you to use the term parents when you do git.log or git.log. When you do git log, I want you to add dash dash parents. So uh, show the parent commits along with everything. So I'm gonna go git log one line graph parents. So you can see right here, the merge commit has two parents. If you look at this ID, this SHA, you'll realize 
This is trunk, where trunk is currently pointing to. When you look at this one, this is where foo is currently pointing to. This is C, this is uh, E. And then now with the graph, it's able to draw this nice graph because it has all that information. It's able to walk back the graph and be able to display it for you so you can actually see in line what is happening. The thing about Rebase is I am completely convinced people don't like Rebase because A, they heard on Twitter that it's bad. B, they used Rebase that one time, screwed it all up and now they hate it and it's ruined their life, therefore Rebase bad. It's not bad, it's actually fantastic. Rebase is just yet another tool in your get bad belt to uh, be able to manipulate and use your repo effectively. There's actually a really good reason why you should use Rebase. We'll kind of get into it a little bit more. So this is our current setup right now. We have foo, which is BC, and we have trunk, which is all the way up to Y at this point because we have merged on uh, bar. So this should be your setup right now. Now we can demonstrate the power of Rebase by updating where Foo points to. We're going to create this graph by using Rebase. This is what Rebase does, is it allows you to update underneath your set of changes. And this is very important because it's not, it is rewriting history in some sense, but it's allowing you to have what is currently the reality, then your changes as opposed to your changes that are tested against some previous reality that's no longer true, you can now have it properly in line and then to be able to find out, did you actually write something that's good or does it suck? All right, so, and this also means when we decide to merge foo onto trunk, we can do a fast forward merge. Because again, our best common ancestor, our merge base is the tip of trunk now that we rebased. And this is typically why people really like rebase is that it allows no merge commits. And there's a good reason why you don't want merge commits and we'll, we'll cover it a little bit later. All right, so basic steps of what rebase does. First thing rebase does is that you will first go get rebase target branch. Uh, second, what it's gonna do is it's gonna actually check out the latest commit on the target branch. So you're no longer on your branch. You actually switch branches to the target branch then it's going to take the branch that you were on, the current branch, and play the commits one at a time in order onto the target branch. Then it will update, then it'll go back, check out your current branch, and update current branch to point to that latest commit. So therefore, it actually just moves your commit forward in time and plays it one at a time. So that's how you got to think about merge. It's a little bit, or a rebase. It's just a little bit different. Uh, but it's very important to understand that because down the line, rebase is going to cause a lot of problems if you don't know about that specific feature. All right. I want you to rebase foo with trunk. Uh, create a separate branch called foo rebase trunk. And so you're going to do a, uh, you're going to literally do a git rebase trunk on this branch. So I'll do it myself too. I'll check out foo. And you can do a git log if you're, if you're curious, right? There you go, ABC. And so then I can do one on trunk, A, B, or A, D, E, X, Y. And then I can go git rebase, oh, git check, I almost, almost messed that one up. There we go. We'll create the new branch, foo rebase trunk. And then I'm gonna go uh, git rebase trunk. All right, we've rebased. So what happened? Well, let's look at the log. Get log, one line, look at what we see. We see trunk, but we also see our two commits that differed from trunk now after y. We now have history that is linear. So now you see that trunk, which contained bar as our last merge, is now the base for foo rebase trunk. In other words, foo is no longer diverging from trunk. It's now linearly walking the history forward, which means we can fast forward merge if we want to.